Let's be real, the Nintendo Switch has been a runaway success, and I don't think many people expected Nintendo to bounce back quickly after the failures of the Wii U, but they absolutely did. It's been on top of both the NPD and the Media Create charts for quite a while now. The system has been selling exponentially well, software is selling exponentially well. Of course, the Nintendo Switch Lite just released, and that's selling very well. So Nintendo Switch fever has been alive and well pretty much since the system came out. But 2020 is going to be a very interesting year for the Nintendo Switch, because there's a lot of variables and a lot of things happening in the video game landscape that could potentially shift away from the Nintendo Switch. So in today's video, I sort of want to do a preview of the Nintendo Switch in 2020. Many people are expecting a little bit of doom and gloom when it comes to the Nintendo Switch because of the way the video game landscape will be shifting in that year. But I want to analyze things. I want to see what we know about 2020, what the variables are for 2020, and give sort of a forecast of what to expect from the Nintendo Switch. So is the Nintendo Switch in trouble in 2020? Like many analysts are saying, that's what we're going to figure out in this video. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's take a look at the Nintendo Switch in 2020. So to kick things off, let's talk about the five exclusive games we know have a 2020 release date when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. Two of them have a concrete 2020 release date, and three of them have just a general 2020 release date. The first game we know about is Tokyo Mirage Sessions Hashtag FE Encore, coming to us on January 17th. Now, arguably, this is one of the greatest names of all time for a video game. I don't know how much clearer you can get when it comes to a title of a video game, but I think this is definitely it. Now, this game, of course, originally released on the Wii U as Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and it really never really found its sort of foothold with the Wii U audience. Obviously, the system was on the tail end of its life cycle, so this game kind of faded into obscurity. But like many Wii U titles that sort of faded into obscurity, Nintendo is bringing this game back with some additional content, and this is the January release for the Nintendo Switch coming to us from Nintendo. Now, personally, I don't have much interest in this title. It's definitely too sort of Japanese weeaboo for me, but I know a lot of people really enjoyed this game, so it will be nice to see how this game gets a breath of fresh air. The second game that we have a concrete release date for is Animal Crossing's New Horizons, which comes to us on March 20th. Now, a lot of people seem to downplay the impact that Animal Crossing has, but when you look at the game sales for Animal Crossing, it is absolutely astronomical. Animal Crossing sells extremely well. It has that sort of widespread appeal that a lot of people really enjoy. You can get people that maybe aren't necessarily hardcore gamers into the Animal Crossing universe. And honestly, I kind of like Animal Crossing games. I sort of fell out of love with them as I felt they get a bit too repetitious over the past few years, but the original Animal Crossing on the GameCube was just a fantastic game, and so I hope that they incorporate some of those mechanics and sort of create a new style of Animal Crossing. From what we've seen, there's definitely a lot more to this game than just the standard Animal Crossings we've seen over the past couple of years, so I do have high expectations for this game and high hopes. And really, those are the only two games with concrete release dates. The other three games are just pigeonholed for 2020. The first game we're going to talk about is of course No More Heroes 3. Now we haven't seen anything about this game, we really don't know much aside from the fact that it takes place two years after Travis Strikes Back and it of course stars Travis Touchdown. Now No More Heroes was definitely a cult classic on the Wii, it was then ported over to other systems as well because you know those sort of games didn't really sell all that great on the Wii, but it was definitely a very fun game so it'll be interesting to see what they do with a jump in technology for the Nintendo Switch. The next game we have to talk about is Deadly Premonition 2 which is a game that was completely out of left field. It definitely surprised me when it was showcased at the last Nintendo Direct, and personally is a game I'm really looking forward to. The original Deadly Premonition was just such a weird game, and I'm really curious to see if they're managing to capture that sort of weird aspect with the sequel of this game. And the final game is, of course, Xenoblade Chronicles Remastered with a 2020 release date as well. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles was a game that released originally on the Wii towards the tail end of the life cycle. It was definitely very difficult to buy it. It was a GameStop exclusive and then GameStop jacked up the price of it to like $80 for used copies. It was definitely a very sloppy situation. The game was then re-released on the new Nintendo 3DS only, and then it was just sort of there. Of course, with the previous success of Xenoblade games, plus the rise in interest in the Shulk character, a lot of people want to play the original Xenoblade game, and I think this is going to be a great way to do it. Now, I have already played this game twice, both on the Nintendo Wii and the new Nintendo 3DS, but it seems like they are doing some things to make this a proper remaster. It doesn't look 
look like they're just sort of porting over the game and making it high definition visuals. It looks like the visual style is actually being completely reworked. So it'll definitely be interesting to see what they end up doing with this game. Will there be additional content? Will some of the areas be reworked as well? I don't necessarily think this is just going to be a half-assed remaster. I think they're going to put a lot of time and effort into this, and it really sort of shows in the implications that we've seen so far from this game. But really, that's it. Those are the five games we know about for 2020 for the Nintendo Switch coming to us as exclusive titles or timed exclusive titles. Now, there are three titles that have been announced for the Nintendo Switch that don't have any sort of concrete release window, but I definitely think are titles that people are expecting to potentially come in 2020. So I want to go in order from least likely to most likely with this, and most likely might actually surprise you. The first game we're going to talk about is Metroid Prime 4. I feel like Metroid Prime 4 is not going to be a 2020 release date. Obviously, there's been a lot of development issues with this game. It's being completely reworked and it's potentially built from the ground up once again. So I think this game will more than likely be a 2021 release date. Now, does that mean we're not going to see Metroid Prime 4 in 2020? No, I definitely think we'll see some sort of stuff in it, but I definitely don't think it's going to be a 2020 release date. The next game we're going to talk about is Bayonetta 3. Once again, I think there's a off chance that Bayonetta 3 could be a 2020 release date, but with Astral Chain just wrapping up, I kind of foresee this game also being a 2021 game. Once again, we haven't seen anything from this game. We really don't know much about this game, so I think this game is a little bit of a ways off. I think uh, Platinum Games may port over one of their other titles to the Nintendo Switch in 2020, something that may be released on other platforms or maybe an HD remaster of a game that we've seen from Platinum Games before, but I don't think that Bayonetta 3 will be a 2020 release date. Now, the game I do think is a 2020 release date is definitely going to surprise a lot of people, and that is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. I honestly think that this is going to be a holiday 2020 release date for the Nintendo Switch. When you look at Breath of the Wild, that engine that was used in Breath of the Wild was absolutely fantastic. Obviously, Nintendo isn't just going to throw away this engine and rebuild from the ground up for Breath of the Wild 2. We know that Breath of the Wild 2 is in development, and obviously, if they're using the same engine, development time on that game is going to be a lot shorter. Something similar to what we saw with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask on the N64. Both of those games used the same engine, and they were completely different style of games, but they used the same engine, and I definitely think that's the direction Nintendo is going with with Breath of the Wild 2. I think you're going to see a better looking game and better performance with this game since we don't have to worry about the Wii U version of the game existing because obviously the Wii U is dead. But I definitely think out of those three games, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 has the best chance of being a holiday 2020 release date and it's something that maybe gamers should start expecting. Obviously, we've seen a little bit of a snippet of the game. I think Nintendo is going to be showing a lot more from that and I definitely think it's going to be a 2020 release date for the holidays. Obviously, that's not all Nintendo is going to bring to the table in 2020. So what other franchises might we see from Nintendo in 2020? I think there's two game franchises that we definitely need to be on the lookout for. The first one is Mario Kart. I think there's a good chance of there being at least some information of Mario Kart 9 in 2020 with maybe a potential release date. You got to remember, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was a fantastic game, pretty much the pinnacle of the Mario Kart series. A lot of people are even wondering, what more can you do? So many tracks, so many game modes, so many characters to use. But Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at its core is still a Wii U game. It's an older game. It was obviously ported over to the Nintendo Switch to sort of breathe life back into it and of course add in things like the battle mode. But I think a Mario Kart 9 has probably been in development for quite a while. So if we get something like a January Nintendo Direct, what's to say that Nintendo isn't going to announce that game as potentially a summer release for the Nintendo Switch? Another game I think people need to be on the lookout for is a successor to Super Mario Odyssey with something like Super Mario Odyssey 2. Much like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild situation, I feel like Odyssey 2 will be built upon the original Odyssey engine. And once again, that is something Nintendo has done. Look at Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 on the Wii U. Nintendo is not afraid to reuse these engines. And considering how good of an engine Super Mario Odyssey was, I think there's a lot of room for improvement and a lot of potential with that game. That game really definitely stood out as one of the best Mario games, in my opinion, and one of the finest 3D Mario games that we've seen in quite a while. I really enjoyed that game, so I would love to see more in that style, and I think Super Mario Odyssey 2 could potentially be another game that Nintendo brings to the table in 2020. 
Next up, we have to talk about third-party support for the Nintendo Switch in 2020. Now, admittedly, third-party support on the Nintendo Switch has been pretty solid. Definitely a hell of a lot better than the Wii U. I think you're seeing a lot of Japanese companies and indie developers really embrace the Nintendo Switch and see great results because of this. Games are selling exponentially well. Things like JRPGs, big indie projects, smaller indie projects. A lot of companies are seeing success when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. When you look at the Western side of third-party development, it's been okay as far as third-party games are concerned. Some companies have definitely been better than others. Companies like Bethesda, I think, are admittedly doing a pretty good job. You've had Doom, you've had Doom Eternal, you had Wolfenstein 2, Wolfenstein Youngblood. So it really remains to be seen what the future of Bethesda and the Nintendo Switch is. There are some companies that have definitely been a bit lackluster when it comes to the Switch, though. Your bigger companies like EA and Activision never really seem to fully embrace the platform, which is admittedly pretty strange considering how well the Nintendo Switch is selling. It's almost like they didn't really give it a chance, which I think is a shame. Will that sort of mindset change in 2020? I'm not quite sure. I think as system sales continue to be strong, I think third-party developers really have to take a strong look at the Nintendo Switch and potentially bringing their games over there. Of course, there are companies out there that are known for their prowess when it comes to porting games to the Nintendo Switch. Companies like Virtuous and Panic Button are pretty much making absolute bank when it comes to bringing third-party games that probably shouldn't be on the Nintendo Switch over to the system. Of course, Outer Worlds is coming to the system, which is a game that I don't think many people expected to be on the Nintendo Switch. I know I didn't, but that is going to be a 2020 release date. I think for the most part, third-party support will be pretty much like we have seen so far. Heavy Japanese and heavy indie developer support, and the occasional Western third-party developer support that could potentially get stronger as the system goes on. So, so far, so good. Everything seems pretty positive for the Nintendo Switch. Where does this sort of doom and gloom come into effect when it comes to the system in 2020? That, of course, is in part to the announcements of the PS5 and the Xbox One successor definitely looming on the horizon. Many people are expecting the PS5 to be unveiled during February of 2020 and with the potential holiday 2020 release date similar to the Xbox One successor. And obviously, that's going to cause somewhat of a rift between the Nintendo Switch and games that come out on the PS5 and the Xbox One successor. There's obviously going to be a big technological jump. There's already a technological dump when you look at things like the Xbox One X to the Nintendo Switch or even the base model PS4 to the Nintendo Switch. So widening that gap even more is definitely going to be very problematic for third-party developers when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. Do we make a dumbed-down version of this game? How close can we get to the full version of this game on the Nintendo Switch? Will it even be worth it? So on and so forth. Now, while these systems will more than likely be unveiled during 2020, even if they release in holiday 20. 2020, I don't think it's going to impact the Nintendo Switch all that much because a lot of these games are obviously going to be at least a year or two away. When you look at how the PS4 and the Xbox One first launched, you saw a lot of games being ported over from the Xbox 360 and the PS3 over onto those systems. You got your definitive editions, your remastered editions. Usually the first year, year and a half of a new PlayStation or a Microsoft console is full of these remastered editions or just smaller games. You usually don't get those bigger games until about a year and a half into the system life cycle. Of course, there's going to be first party games, but those wouldn't really impact the Nintendo Switch to begin with because they would never come to the system. When it comes to third party developers, I think you're going to see a lot of remasters, some remakes, some definitive editions come out on the PS5 and the Xbox One successor, and I don't necessarily think it's going to impact the Nintendo Switch. But even if it does, there is still one variable that is very quiet, but could potentially come to the Nintendo Switch and definitely help in this situation. And that, of course, is the fact that cloud gaming is sort of picking up steam. Now, the Nintendo Switch has seen cloud gaming in Japan, with both Capcom and Ubisoft trying out cloud gaming in that region. We saw Resident Evil 7 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey come to the Nintendo Switch via cloud gaming. Now, while the performance of those games seemed to be pretty good, honestly, obviously the Japanese market didn't really adopt that system and didn't really seem to like that when it came to the Nintendo Switch, which admittedly sort of makes sense. When you look at hardware and software sales for the Nintendo Switch stuff in Japan, a lot of people like to have physical products, so the downloading stuff doesn't really play a huge market in Japan quite like it does in the United States. So that's kind of weird that they didn't even try it in the United States yet. But, but obviously with Google Stadia and Microsoft really starting to make a push for cloud gaming, it's definitely a service that could come to the Nintendo Switch and could potentially help out a lot of third-party developers in bringing their games to the Nintendo Switch without having to cut corners. Yes, there will be some people that are upset by that. I personally would be upset by that as I prefer to have physical games. But if you have to choose between a 
a cloud version of the game or no version of the game, I think some people would choose a cloud version of the game. So cloud gaming could potentially really help the Nintendo Switch against the PS5 and the Xbox One successor. Of course, there's always rumors about a Nintendo Switch Pro that could help shorten the gap as well. But I really think cloud gaming would be more instrumental in helping the Nintendo Switch, especially with these bigger third party developer games that will be coming out on things like the PS5 and the Xbox One successor. So is it doom and gloom for the Nintendo Switch in 2020? Are problems rising on the horizon? No, not really. I mean, the video game landscape is always shifting. We know what to expect from the PS4 and the Xbox One in 2020. Sure, things like the PS5 and the Xbox One successor will definitely put Nintendo on notice, but the earliest those systems are gonna come out is holiday 2020. So that's not going to really have a big impact for that 2020 year. 2021 maybe will be a bit more of an interesting discussion. But as far as 2020's lineup is concerned, Nintendo is obviously holding some things close to their hand right now. They're not showing their full hand of games. And that's sort of what Nintendo does. That's what these Nintendo Directs and things like E3 presentations are for. To learn about games that are coming out within the next three to six months that will be available on your Nintendo Switch. I think 2020 is going to be another fantastic year for the platform. Considering the PS4 and the Xbox One will be winding down and the earliest you'll probably see the Xbox One a successor and the PS5 will be at holiday 2020. It's definitely going to be a lot of smooth sailing for the Nintendo Switch. And admit a very exciting year. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of the Nintendo Switch in 2020. Do you expect there to be more games announced? What games would you like to see? How do you think third party support is going to be? And how will things like the PS5 and the Xbox One successor factor into the Nintendo Switch's success? And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Make sure you check out the pinned comment in the comment section down below. We are giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite. There's still definitely plenty of time to enter that contest. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.